One, two, three, showtime. One, two, three. Yan. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, showtime. Come on, Salama Kaijan, exactly at 8 p.m. Maha Mets, Maha Hayes. My next Abi Maha Hayes, Maha Hay Darian. Come on, Salama Kaijan. Yan Bago Mag Facts first, Mag Meta first. Yan and I'm tired. Baka Mala Tayo Nianua. Ni Parin Christian Esguera. Ganda ng profile pic. Pulang pula. Diba? <laughs> Tuloy, kinamit natin siya. Don't worry, mga kamets. Kahays, gagawa rin tayo ng sarili natin. Ano? T-shirt. Ano muna tayo? Mag- ano? Ipon muna tayo. Ayan. Para may pangtapat naman tayo dyan sa facts first. Okay. Base sa mga intel reports. Kasi may confidential fund din tayo. Base sa ating intel reports. Mukhang 8.30 pa naman si Christian Esguera. So may time pa siya mag... Troll sa akin, yan, tinatroll tayo last time ni Paring Ronald for our R&R show Mamay, si Ronald, tatawagin na naman niyang Richard si Christian, no? Ayan, tayo, <laughs> el delikado dyan Ayan mga kameta, marami tayong pag-usapan, dami nangyayari sa ating minamahal na bansa Including of course, mga kameta sa West Philippine Sea, may mga nangyayari dyan, medyo mag-update naman tayo dyan Pag-usapan din natin yung mga latest sa ating politika, may connection lahat po yan Alam nyo naman katulad natin, kinoconnect natin lahat Mga kamets, Zaddy Moves Yeah, yeah <laughs> Ayan ta- wala eh, kailangan natin tapatan ang Fox First Siyempre si Fox First, ganda ng setup Meron siyang ano dito dyan So, yan lang mga ano natin, bawi na lang tayo sa mga The Moves Alright, okay, tama na yan, tama na yan O, seryoso na tayo mga kameta And then, Actually, I was hoping to start much earlier kasi pumalpak tayo kanina kasi ganda ng ano ko, pasok ko kanina, labas ako nakasuit ko yung Italian shoes natin na 10-15 years ago na nabili natin sa sale kasi para magsasara na natin yung ano tapos binili ko yan so after 10 years, sinusuit natin yan proud na proud tayo, paglakad, boom! wala na yung wala na yung isang soul niya sabi ko, nako po, paano yan? si kumuha pa tayo ng ano Plastic, nilagay natin sa loob na plastic habang nagtatrabaho tayo And then dumaan pa si parang John Gibbs kanina, nag-high tayo, etc. Ayan, tapos pagpunta naman natin dyan sa Mr. Quiki Pumunta tayo sa Mr. Quiki, parang naman medyo mura <laughs> Italian shoes, medyo sublime, Mr. Quiki, ayan Pagkita ko, ba't yung kabila rin medyo alanganin Tuloy, naka-umuwi tayo ng walang sapatos Buti na buti na lang medyo malapit yung mall doon sa bahay kaya medyo nakaraos naman nakauwi tayo kaya pasensya na medyo late tayo at uh, medyo galit pa rin tayo doon sa mga Mr. Quick kasi sinabi ni Madam pwede na maayusin yung zipper pagdala namin zipper ay masyadong malaking bag hindi pero so mahabang usapan yan let's go back to serious stuff facts first muna tayo okay all right actually there are two things you want to talk about quite separate issues but i think they are very much related First of all, itong development na kita natin, so on the domestic political front, and this has a lot of implications also on the international front, uh, meron daw mga movements against former president, former speaker of the house, Gloria Macabagal Arroyo. Some are wondering if this can be connected to broader realignments and at the same time fault lines that we're seeing within the ruling coalition. Of course, pinag-usapan natin. Yung mga hidwan, sa pagitan ng alam, the whole tambaluslos kind of controversy Pinag-usapan natin yan with R and all, with Ronald, etc But of course, we know that a lot of the tensions within the ruling coalition Nagsimula talaga ito mga kamets, mga kahays When na-demote si former president Gloria Macapagal Arroyo Former speaker of the house Gloria Macapagal Arroyo Doon sa rankings, no? doon sa hierarchy ng, uh, ng congressional or house leadership and then that essentially was was seen as a kind of a uh you know first i don't know salvo diba? and the next thing you know opening salvo no and the, the next thing you know of course nagalit si Sara Duterte kasi malapit si vice president Sara Duterte kay Arroyo and next thing you know lumabas na the whole tambalos-lo stuff now the thing is we're now wondering what's going on here dito sa lob no over the past few months because comparatively, major quiet yung camp ni President Arroyo. Although the President Arroyo camp had to come out actually um, not long ago 
when lumabas itong pinagsasabi ng China na may presidente daw na nangako sa kanila na um, na daw tatanggalin daw yung Sierra Madre na niligay ni Erap. Of course, sinabi nila Jingo and JV, ay hindi nang hindi tatay namin, macho yung tatay namin, hindi mag withdraw Pag nilagay namin yung Sierra Madre diyan, hindi naman tatanggalin yan. Bakit naman tatanggalin yan? Ano ba kayo? So, walang evidence ng China na Erap si President Erap lang nangako sa kanya. And I think it's totally nonsensical like with President Erap. And then, of course, the next suspicion or the next source of suspicion or the next target of suspicion rather was the Arroyo administration which came after Estrada administration and had very warm relationship with China. No, in fact, that's the beginning of the whole golden era conversation about China. Marami tayong nasulat about that. You can check it online among others. I can also post it here. And of course, we know that President Arroyo herself in many ways served as a de facto foreign policy advisor to multiple presidents over the past decade or so from President Duterte to President Marco Jr. Secret weapon naman daw ni Marco Jr. nang bumisita siya sa China. Yun ang uh, pag-describe niya kay President Arroyo. But, the thing is, President Arroyo actually came out uh, not long ago to immediately shut down etong mga insinuations na baka yung administration niya ang nangako na i-withdraw yung BRP share madre. And of course, that's a kind of a proposal that for some people made sense in, in light of the controversies around the now unconstitutional, of course, formerly unconstitutional, uh, joint maritime seismic undertaking deal, yung JMSU deal na nansign ni President Arroyo with, together with two communist countries, not one, but two communist countries, together with Vietnam and China to manage this. Of course, their intentions was to put things on an even keel, but the JMSU was extremely, extremely controversial, and eventually it was ruled as unconstitutional because it do, it's not in consonance with the Philippine Constitution pagdating sa ating mga claims sa West Philippine Sea. Uh, and not to mention, of course, there were also concerns about lack of proper consultations with uh, major stakeholders kasi may mga secrecy clauses pa yung JMSU. So anyway, the JMSU is not only moot and academic because it lapsed, it was not renewed and fully implemented after 2008 onwards, but more recently also had the Supreme Court ruling it out. But some people were trying to connect that and to say that baka naman in the context of that, in the context of that, President Arroyo may have made certain promises. But, in first to President Arroyo, she came out very clearly the other month, uh, ito yung August, and sinabi niya, I never promised China to remove BRP Shadow Madre Jans Ayungin, or Second Thomas Shaw. So, former President, former Speaker of the House, uh, Arroyo, was absolutely clear about this. That's nonsense. Any kind of implications na may kinalaman siya sa mga pangako niyan, wala. So, obviously, the next target of suspicion is not Aquino because Aquino was very tough towards China throughout his term, especially after 2012, after the whole Scarborough Shoal, but it fell on Digong. And si Digong, papunta sa China, etc. Wala tayong clarity about what happened during the Digong time. Did he promise anything to China during the negotiations of a potential joint development agreement or a service contract to West Philippine Sea? Pinag-usapan natin in greater detail. Dun sa ating meta podcast with former justice associate justice Carpio, of course, is is has been advising multiple administration on this issue and was very much involved dun sa arbitration case natin in 2013 to 2016 against China, which of course we won big time. But of course, the issue always was how to effectuate that, which is something we're going to discuss later on. No, so anyway, so after that again, quiet see President Arroyo, but more most rec more recently than man. Um, uh, certain individuals or certain groups look like parang they're pushing the envelope. No, So the, the latest thing, and somehow this could be related, I mean, it has a connection to West Philippine Sea because Malampaya and all of that has a dimension of West Philippine Sea. So now, uh, there are a group of people who want to push the envelope and have been uh, wrapping, you know, uh, New cases over alleged misuse, alleged misuse of 38 billion pesos of Malampaya plan. No, so let's just a little bit look at the details. Sil, basahin lang natin yan. Facts first. Okay, sabi mo, nasan natuloy? Wait lang. <laughs> Baka magalit na naman. Okay. But namalani nga natin. Walang yan. Ayan, ito, ito. Dami kasi natin bukas ng mga... Ayan, ayan. Dami natin bukas. Ito, ito, ito. Okay. Let's go to this. Mahmets. So, electricity consumer advocates filed cases for graft and malversation before the office of the Ombudsman against former President Arroyo for allegedly, allegedly misusing 38.8, almost 39 billion pesos of Malampaya Fund 
Ayon sa mga complainants, namely the, Asso the National Association of Electricity Consumers for Reforms Incorporated, NASECOR, and Boses ng Consumer Alliance, uh, Alliance, Alliance uh, Incorporation. And kasi mas kaka Grand Prix, Grand Prix ni BBM, na nagpo-French na tayo, Alliance Incorporation, BK, BKI, based their arguments from a special audit report of the Commission on Audit release noong 2017 kung saan na detalya yung alleged misuse of 900 million pesos of the Malampaya Fund. Ang accusation laban kay Eroy is that allegedly nag-abuse siya ng presidential discretion provided under presiden presidential decree number 910 or the Energy Development Fund which aimed to finance energy projects. The provision allows for the use of the funds for, quote, other purposes that may be determined with the president in confidential fund but they said a royal funnel the funds ayon sa kanila from malampaya to agriculture and integration programs transfer projects national security activities and cash assistance to the transfer sector so again my my aspect and the realignments and what is doing with the funds while disbursements may have served a public purpose the group said quote the same ultimately frustrated the country's drive towards energy independence leaving the energy consumers at the mercy of a volatile world market and inhibiting growth Ito yung detailed of breakdown of where the money went. 10 billion pesos went to the Department of National Defense, AFP, and different military branches. 9 billion pesos went to National Electrification Administration, National Power Corporation. 5.8 billion went to the Department of Agriculture. 4.8 billion went to the Department of Public Works and Highways. 3 billion went to the Department of Finance. Blah, 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 so on and so forth. And only 15 million pesos went to the Philippine Coast Guard. So responded Gloria Macabalari whimsically took the opportunity. Ayon sa kanila, the, the said loss in advocacy. And adequacy and deliberately twisted the interpretation of the said provision to mean that she as a president had this okay so essentially the idea is that na, na misuse misallocate and inappropriately uh na reallocate you know funds for malampaya kung saan saan which which kind of went against the very purpose of the fund and that also undermined ayon sa mga complainants yung long-term uh viability of developing our own energy resources now obviously the situation in the malampaya is to put it mildly alanganin because kung titingnan niyo yung nangyayari ngayon sa ating bansa, don't worry, dikit natin yan sa West Philippines kay connected lahat niyan eh. Okay, so katulad ng pinag-usapan namin ni Justice Scorpion not long ago, if you look at it, ito ang problema natin. So as I mentioned in an article today, in article ko today on Philippine Daily Inquiry in my column, I explained that President Marcos Jr. is facing two ticking time bombs sa West Philippine Sea. Sa isang banda, sa isang banda of course, ayun yung ayun ay Yun yung problema sa Ayungin Shoal, di ba? Yung Sierra Madre, Sierra Madre, of course, alam niyo naman Sierra Madre, yung BRP Sierra Madre, World War II, rusted, dilapidated ship, grounded by, by era, yun na, <clears throat> na, 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 and na, uh, nung panahon ni era, of course, we, we grounded it, we ram it into the area, and of course, the argument is, walang kinalaman ng China dapat dito sa nangyari sa, sa Ayungin Shoal, because, this is within our exclusive economic zone. It's not even a territory to be claimed. But anyway, the problem kasi is, bibigay na yung, yung, yung share madre na yan, uh, It's just a matter of time mm, that gives in to the elements. So something drastic has to be done about that, whether we're gonna put another vessel there, if, or whether we're gonna build new structures in the area, whether we're gonna put some concrete uh, structures around the BRP share madre as it gives in to the elements. Something drastic has to be done about that because we're, it's a matter of months, probably if not years. Uh, bago bibigay na itong BRP share madre, no? So katulad ng dun sa isang podcast discussion natin with former Admiral uh, Ong, sabi niya actually the expectation was much early in the pandemic time pa dapat na wala niya. Eh. But tumagal yan for some reason, but still something has to be done. But the second time bomb, ticking time bomb, is etong problema. Yung malampaya plant ay paubus na, okay? And we need alternative sources to develop. No alternative sources to develop for our national security. And the problem is that the most viable alternative area for national for for energy resource natural gas development is Nanjan sa Reed Bank. Oh, yung si ano Senator Robin Hood. Sabi niya wala daw nang yari naman nung panahon ni Digong. Everything was going fine daw, perfect. Well, Google Reed Bank Crisis 2019. What on earth was going on there? So obviously, inaras tayo sa Reed Bank and pini-prevent tayo ng mga Chinese militias, Chinese Coast Guard, Chinese vessels for more than a decade. Alright? Doon sa mga hindi nag-google, paki-google yan. For more than a decade, 
nagsulat po tayo ng mga libro, mga academic articles dyan, so medyo alam natin yung sinasabi natin. Okay, so for more than a decade, pinaprevent tayo ng China from developing human resources dyan sa Red Bank and essentially binabuli tayo into negotiating a joint development agreement. Now, it was supposed to be service contract and then now suddenly they, they don't want that, they want a joint development agreement. Kasi in a service contract, parang sa malampaya, yung kompanya na magde-develop dyan, tanggap nila yung sovereignty natin. But that's not gonna be the case if it's a joint development agreement because per on clause, that happens when two countries have overlapping claims and kind of recognize that each side has a sovereign, legitimate sovereignty claim. So you spend that and you join develop. Anyway, walang napuntan niyan sa pano ni Digong, no? So that was put aside in Pinarkian, walang nangyari. Ang problema is, good news, yes, hindi tayo nag-negotiate ng mga kapalpakan or something even potentially treacherous, uh, or worse, uh, under the previous administration, on the, on the Reed Bank front. But the reality is, paubos pa rin yung malampaya in the, in the meantime, at hindi pa rin na develop yung nangyayari sa Reed Bank. So you have two ticking time bomb at the same time, putting the Mar- Marcos admin- administration under tremendous amount of pressure to do something about it. So the energy security aspect is gonna stare us, right? Stare at us in the coming years. And actually, we are in fact, staring into an energy security crisis abyss not long from now because even if today tayo mag-drill and may mahanap talaga tayo sa Reed Bank ng big time ng mga resources, it will take us years before we fully develop it and to be able to make the transition from paubos na malampaya plan and you put something else, meaning Reed Bank, operational now. Halos hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin nangyari kasi binubuli na naman tayo ng China. So yun yung, yun yung problema natin. We cannot develop our resources because we are being prevented from doing that by someone who has absolutely no legitimate claim in the area because the only basis for China to claim the Red Bank is the Nine Dash Line which was invalidated by international arbitration. Now, before we go deeper into the issue of West Philippines at mukhang paubos natin yung charger ko, lag- lagay natin yung charger natin, ay malapit na rin yung fax first ni Sierra so kailan natin tapusin to, baka naman. <laughs> nah, joke lang. Um, balikan natin to. So, let's park muna the West Philippines issue a little bit uh, there kasi balikan natin yan shortly. The thing is, the Arroyo situation, the Arroyo situation, as much as it has a foreign policy dimension, as I also argued, what's happening in the Philippines is something very, very interesting. All right? Uh, the cliche is that all politics is local, right? But the thing in the Philippines is that one of the reasons why we are seeing a fault line within the ruling coalition, the whole uni team, is actually disagreement on foreign policy issues, including on China, on West Philippines, etc. And some are wondering if the attacks on Arroyo as legitimate as some of these, you know, uh, you know, the concerns about hindi nang ginawa na maayos, energy security, blah, blah, whatever. Some are wondering if this is a proxy war. This is a proxy war to isolate yung allies ni, uh, ni, ni Sara or those who are allied to Sara to kind of eventually also isolate Sara. So some are looking at that dimension. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but that's one interpretation that is coming out. Okay, first you're demoted from the ranks. Second thing, some are insinuating that you made some dodgy promises to 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 China. Of course, President Arroyo, former president, has shut down all of those things. And then later on, of course, now that you have this 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 raps being filed against her. Now I don't think it, it will go that far. I have my reasons to be confident about that. Um, okay, ibang usapan yan. But but still, some are wondering if a proxy war is happening internally, right? And that this thing, these things are not happening in isolation. That one of these things are coincidental. But actually, something is going on. So, siguro, iwanan natin kay Ronald <laughs> to spell it out. All right? Okay. Ayaw naman. We're fair. We are, you uh, know, we're legitimate. We are. How should I put it? We are objective. So I'll leave it to Ronald <laughs> to say things. All right. Okay. On that note, thank you very much, mga kameta. Medyo low bat na tayo. Okay. Medyo low bat, low bat na tayo. Let me thank everyone for for watching out. Kasi kung kung ako ng charger, tataya ako, whatever, okay. Bukas na lang natin pag-usapan yung ibang issue katulad ng West Philippines, you know. Kasi I wanted to actually do a long talk on dito siya, issues sa West Philippines. Eh. Since, um, right now, nagsisimula na po yung sama-sama naval exercises. That's pretty big thing. Pretty big itong sama-sama naval exercises na yan. Kasama ang, ang United States, Canada, Japan, but in New Zealand, Australia, nagpadala, in Indonesia even, nagpadala ng mga 
observer. So, siguro bukas na lang natin pag-usapan yan, no? Separately. And then, in the meantime, there's another thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys, speaking of West Philippines, is actually arbitration case. Tinitignan din natin ang additional arbitration case. So, I wanted to explain to you guys what could be the strategy here if we're gonna go for an additional arbitration case based on the precedence that we set to our arbitration award victory in 2016. Particularly looking at Article 287 of uh, of, of, of on clause, Article 287 of on clause on compulsory arbitration. At tignan natin, ano yung pwede mga benefits sa Philippines in terms of leverage? Because, again, as I said, may ticking time bomb tayo na dalawa. Yung isa, paubos na yung malampaya plant, pero hindi pa rin natin na-develop yung read bank kasi nabubuli tayo. At pangalawa, yung sa BRP share madre, sa may ayung insyol, bumibigay na yung share madre. So, kailangan natin, we need to do something there to reinforce our claims and avoid the kind of a serious situation. So, posible na may mga nag-iisip sa loob na Baka if we move on the arbitration front, habang kumukuha tayo ng suporta sa ating mga allies, we can put the pressure on China. We can take the fight to China and we can force them to negotiating table and get some real concession, extract some concessions from them to say, wag niyo bullyin kung bumili, uh, gumawa ka ng new structures dyan sa yung insyol and pangalawa, we need to do something about readback. Maybe let's do a service contract, we'll allow Sinopec or CNPC to be our partner in developing that area but do not prevent us from moving forward because our national economic and energy security is at stake and we cannot wait anymore. Both Aquino and um, Duterte were not able to develop the Reed Bank because of the bullying and harassment. So something has to change there. So my sense is that is the logic behind the arbitration that is being thought about. Not to mention, of course, legitimate concerns about environmental damage and also the idea that we can build on our arbitration award case in 2016 to push for damages, no? And if China at pumalak sila, their assets in other countries, in Canada, in United States, in Europe, whatever, could be seized, no? Especially state-owned uh, companies of China. So those are the things that I think we can discuss in a separate episode. Pasensya na, medyo low bat na pala ako, hindi ko inaayos dito. And then, then malapit na si Fax first. So ayaw naman natin mag-overlap dyan. So pang warm-up lang naman tayo, di ba? Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, so... Many things are happening. So as you can see here, grab yung situations of Philippine politics right now because there's two dynamic situations existing simultaneously. So para my two, it's like playing three-dimensional, uh, playing on a three-dimensional chessboard that are superimposed on each other, and each of them are moving with different velocity and different and with different players playing different games. No, so meron kang West Philippines situation there, which inevitably is also related to the whole Malampay issue. And inevitably, it's also related to the internal disagreements and fault lines we're seeing within the so-called unity or the grand coalition there. And that could create also opening for the opposition, progressives, internationally could also make opening for stronger alliances, uh, traditional alliances, also bring in other countries, India, Korea, whatever. So as you can see, this is what's happening right now. So if there's anyone out there who's just looking at one aspect, looking like at Marites, what's the latest Marites within the ruling coalition, or tinitignan lang yung international picture and missing the domestic picture, you're missing the big, big, big dynamic here. So this is the mega dynamic. This is the meta analysis that we we need so a top wing framework of analysis ko essentially no? i'm looking at the interaction at least two level interaction between the international dynamics us china west philippines and the domestic dynamics sara arroyo romualdez bbm all of that so nag nag interact itong dalawa na yan. and of course pag usapan din natin soon uh, isa pang bagay, which is uh, China's approval ratings, trust rating in the Philippines are extremely, extremely low, which gives all the incentives uh, for President Marcos Jr. to take a tougher stance and also at the same time puts a lot of pressure on the pro Duterte groups. And San Basila, uh, uh, because obviously, hindi na sexy maging pro China suddenly, di ba? Kasi dati andun si tatay, barangay geopolitics, anti America, etc. Ako naman. Ayo na ayo ko dun sa mga patronizing American style na saver etc. No, they were not very helpful to us nung nung time na binuli tayo sa Scarborough, binuli tayo sa Panganiban uh, Reef. Yeah, well, well, wala silang tulong masyado. But things have changed. Things have changed especially since 2019 onwards. Things are getting interesting. So it's important for the Philippines to play his card well. And President Marcos Jr., he's at the very center of this two-level dynamic that we're talking about. Not this two-level analysis that we're talking about, right? So international relations, we have a two-level analysis. Okay, Robert Putnam. So I'm using a, 